Hi, my name's Bill, but everyone around here knows me as the Wrecking Bar. My shrink says that I'm crazy because I never change my shirt and I take my bar with me everywhere I go. He's told me that to help me sort out my feelings, if I talked through the events that brought me to the hospital with all the patients here, it would be a good thing. Now, I don't know if I need to sort out my feelings, but I don't mind telling you guys the story because, hell, it's one of the best days of my life. It all began on a quiet New York morning at least until 5 a.m. rolled around, and then 5.01, 5.02. Man, I went through a lot of alarm clocks back then. <laughs> I was a real loser, a real nobody. I didn't know who I was or what I wanted. I was the kind of guy who read self-help books. This was my favorite. It was called How to Get What You Deserve by Mike Layden. It was written by this hotshot businessman, salesman, and he was supposed to teach you the secrets of success. Man, I ate that shit up. At this point, I was working as a construction worker, building new luxury apartments downtown. Meanwhile, I lived in this fucking dump, and I dreamed nonstop of getting rich and being as successful as my man Mike Layden. Now, every day, I took the train about 6,000 blocks downtown, surrounded by all of the worst people in the city. <laughs> and it was the summer, so it was goddamn hot in those cars. I mean, it was like 300 degrees. And all the while, I had my head buried in that book. Man, I read that book everywhere. Now, I also had my head buried up my ass most of the time. I'd walk around everywhere with that thing, and everywhere I went, I'd make a real mess of pretty much every situation. I could barely walk down the street without getting into trouble. <laughs> now, the worst was when I got to work. This was especially horrible. I just couldn't seem to do anything right. My boss was a real ball buster named Tony, and he really hated my guts, probably with good reason. I'd always end up smashing something I wasn't supposed to, and he'd lay into me something awful. Nothing I did was ever right. I can still hear him yelling at me. He'd stand over my shoulder, and he'd just start shouting, gentler, gentler, gentler. Man, my life sucked. I hated my apartment, I hated my job, and I hated my commute. And I thought that the only thing that would make it better was reading self-help books. I was an idiot. So on this particular day, I was heading home with my nose buried in a book, of course. And I come to this particular chapter where my man, Mike Layden, is describing how he goes about selling everything from luxury apartments to wrecking bars. Now, all of a sudden, it pops in my head. I left my wrecking bar back at work. And now this thing cost $19.95 and I had about $1.50 to my name at the time. So I hightailed it back to the workspace, and I went there because if I knew if I left it, some other asshole was gonna steal that thing. So now I'm about to walk out, and all of a sudden I look around and I see this nice furniture that we had just put in there. And I start to imagine myself in this place. And I start to imagine what it would be like to live in this luxury. And I start to imagine what it would be like to be Mike Lade. And then I imagined that I deserved to live there. But you know, that all fell apart real, real quick. Everything I touch just turns to shit. I break everything. It all just shatters and gets smashed. And then, you know what I did? I fucking lost it. I just can't seem to have nice things. And all those horrible subway trips, all those hot, sweaty nights in that dank, disgusting apartment, all those times my boss told me to work quicker, to be careful, to work gentler and gentler and gentler, just made me snap. And so, as I tore through that luxury apartment that I had just spent the last month of my life building, I thought about all the time I had wasted chasing nice, fancy things. I thought about all the time that I had spent with reading that goddamn self-help book. And I thought about how good it felt to swing this here wrecking bar hard and fast without a care in the world. It felt like an extension of my arm. 
I felt like it was the only purpose in the world was to tear down that fucking apartment building until finally I just had to smash everything. It was perhaps the first time in my life that I felt I had ever had a purpose. And all those thoughts about success and getting rich faded into the background. All that mattered now was the bar. And then there was just one thing left to smash. So I said, bye, 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 Mike. <laughs> and now as those pages scattered down on the city below, I fell back into the mess I had made and felt completely satisfied for the first time ever. I was covered in filth, and I loved it. And I've never stopped swinging since that day. And I've never looked back for one second in my old life. Well, that's not completely true. I did keep one of those pages that flew out of old Mike's book. I have it right here, and I'd like to read you guys a passage. It's the last page from chapter 7. And it goes, the saddest thing in the world for me is when a person realizes what they are early in life. I am successful because I take words and images on paper or TV and use them to plant ideas in your head. But when someone really knows who they are, this doesn't work, and my message just floats past them like a discarded newspaper blowing down the street. Real poetic, Mike. The words and the images that I have slaved over become nothing more than trash, but I don't spend too much time worrying about that. After all, there's a sucker born every minute, and not everyone can be a success. Now I keep that with me as a reminder that I finally am a success and that Mike Layden had nothing to do with it.